Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In this video, we continue looking at the XML file format and um, how we can specify a particular data set in it. So, we had started trying to uh, convert this file over here into this, and I also introduced some additional information uh, that we could put. And of course, the reason why I wanted to go from a table into XML was so that we could do things like put in comments, uh, stuff that would not specify as nicely. And the one of the advantages here is that in addition to specifying a comment, for example, on the student as a whole, I can actually put a comment inside of, for example, a test grade. And that is perfectly happy with the XML. That's the flexibility that, that XML gives us. In addition, if someone were to come and look at this file, they can see, oh, this is a student. Uh, this is a quiz grade. This is a test grade. And you can tell where, where the comments are. Okay, so it's, it's very self-documenting and tells you what's going on. Now we have some extra information in here, some other students. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this empty tag here. Um, we'll make another student and actually let me go ahead and your entire XML document needs to be inside of a single element so I'm going to make a an element called grades that encompasses the whole thing And that way, uh, I can put in my other two students now. Name, John Doe. Quiz, at a 65. And another one, 92. A test of a 72 and copy and paste that for Jane has a 99 an 89 and a 91 okay so here I have basically duplicated the information that was in this tabular form over here one thing that you obviously note in doing this is this got a lot longer. Um, you know, XML is not a compact data format. Uh, it is going to make things longer, and that is why most of the time it's actually written by machines. Programs write it out, and they send it across for other programs to read. And it's the the fact that you have a standardized format and standardized parsers that makes it so it's easier to work with this than to create your own uh, format. Though technically CSV is also a nice standard format. But here the XML gave me the ability to put in things like comments, uh, well, to, to put in comments on students uh, on there. So there are a few other things we need to talk about before we're kind of done talk, uh, looking at what goes into writing an XML file. Um, one is, what if my what if the text that I wanted to put in here, the content of my uh, my file, required things, characters that were special in XML? So, for example, uh, in here, thinks that three is greater than four. Okay, um, or even four is less than three. Now, just typing that, you can see what VI does to the to the coloring, and that's problematic. And it turns out that three greater than four will also cause problems when we're trying to read stuff in, because greater than and less than have a special meaning in uh, in XML. They're used to denote tags. So what I need to do here is I, you have a different way of specifying special characters in here. And 
those start with an ampersand. So for example, in the case of greater than, it is ampersand GT semicolon. So all of your special characters begin with an amp ampersand and they end with a semicolon just to give examples of some. So the greater than, as we just saw, is GT. A less than is LT. Uh, you need to have quotes because the double quotes wind up being significant. If I wanted a quote inside of an attribute, uh, I would use that special character. In fact, actually, if I want to quote anywhere in my XML file, I will use that. Uh, to represent it. And then because the ampersand is uh, special in here, I need to also have a special character for the ampersand. And there is a way to denote single quotes, uh, an apostrophe as well. So these are some helpful special characters that, that will allow you to um, and there, are, there are other options for this, but these are the ones that, that you really need to, to use the most because pretty much any time that you need a greater than, a less than, a double quote, a single quote, or an ampersand, you need to use uh, these special character signatures instead. The last thing that's really helpful to do, and this is one of those things that in, for example, that map file really might have been useful, would have been a user comment. So just like in our Scala programs, every so often, I want to put in something that tells me what's going on in there, I might want that in my XML as well. So just in case some human has to come look at it. And the format for doing that starts with a less than bang hyphen hyphen and ends with hyphen hyphen greater than. And you saw as I was typing this, this can be multi-line. Okay, so I am able to use this to comment out uh, an entire element if, if I want. Um, and that is something that we couldn't do with our flat text file. Okay? You couldn't put notes to yourself to help you remember what you were planning to do or whatnot because in that flat text file, everything that you typed was, was going to be read in and it needed to be exactly the format that you were reading it. And so unless you wrote a much more complex parser, uh, you really couldn't put any additional information in there. In this case, someone else has written the more complex parser. Uh, the, there's a standard XML parser. Uh, many programming languages, pretty much any programming language that people are using these days, is going to have someone has built an XML parser for it. And so it is easy to get those things uh, into your program as data. And in fact, that's exactly what we're going to look at in the uh, next video and that is how you can load in XML files.